Okay, go ahead, Danny. Okay, thank you. All right, can you see everything okay? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right, everybody, my name is Danny Johnson. Um, I am a part of the atmospheric scientist team here at uh, Salish Kootenai College here in Pablo, Montana. And our institution is a tribal college. Um, the thing that we'll be focusing on uh, is how we fostered an environment um, where people felt safe to share their ideas. And then we'll get into a couple specific uh, optimizations we came up with that might be useful to other teams as well. So to get started, um, I thought that this uh, quote is, is quite relevant. Uh, this comes from a document, What Made Apollo a Success. And uh, to just jump right into it, it says, of course, the way we got this job done, referring to landing a man on the moon, was with meetings. Big meetings, little meetings, hundreds of meetings. The thing we always tried to do in these meetings was to encourage everyone, no matter how shy, to speak out. Hopefully, but not always, without being subjected to ridicule. We wanted to make sure we had not overlooked any legitimate input. And so taking from that, of course, uh, everyone had lots and lots of meetings, but they're, you know, they're incredibly important. They're the medium over which we share our ideas. And it's so important to uh, encourage shy people to speak out. And um, you know, we don't just wanna not ridicule, but we also want to really foster an environment where everyone feels comfortable uh, to do so. Because we know that if the, best idea, uh, if the best ideas can bubble up to the top, then we're gonna have a successful result. So a little bit about our team. Um, uh, we, we have, if, if our team had a superpower, it would definitely be diversity. Uh, our, our youngest teammate uh, is 18 years old. Our eldest is 61. And uh, we have plenty of 20s, 30s, and 40 year olds uh, as well. Uh, our team consists of both tribal and non-tribal members. And a lot of us, uh, myself included, that are non-traditional students had work histories in corrections, construction, manufacturing, business ownership, et cetera. And so I bring that up because um, with diversity, uh, when we're all uh, sharing our ideas, trying to you know, come up with the best option, sometimes that can lead to friction. Uh, and there was a bit of that in the first uh, couple of weeks when we were learning each other and just starting out. And so one of the ways that really helped us to become cohesive as a team was uh, in our code of conduct. Uh, what was really important was that we all co-wrote it together. And um, it's something that we all had input in and we all signed on for it, you know, literally. And um, top of mind was the success of the mission. Uh, we tried not to be too precious about our personal ideas. If someone had another idea, we would absolutely be willing to try it. And um, uh, if anyone ever, like myself, um, would ever, you know, maybe be late, I'm not so much of a morning person, but, you know, I'd be privately reminded, hey, you know, just remember code of conduct, very important. And I think that helped us to resolve any interpersonal conflicts and probably a lot more before they even occur, just kind of nipping it in the bud. And so after a couple of weeks, we were up and running. Uh, our team did really, really well uh, we, uh, during the summer internship and then at the annual eclipse in Nevada. Uh, all of us learned our roles and, and we got it down pat. It was, it was a really, really great experience. Um, so a couple of little suggestions that uh, we had come up with that we wanted to share with everyone was uh, a lot of people probably do this, but uh, we would make sure to do early morning and late night launches just to simulate the, the campaign. Uh, we would recommend uh, the secondary field person have large chest pockets to fill the tools, keeping things off the ground, keeping it handy for uh, the primary field person. And then um, another really big thing um, was uh, we, we got a Windows 10 mobile device, a, a tablet, and use that for the weather station. So we didn't have to pull up the ground station for that. But um, yeah, those are a few quick things that I wanted to run through. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to say a big thank you to MSGC, um, Angela, Meredith, Chris, and, um, and our team here. And we're looking forward to the Texas launch. Thank you, Danny. Okay, the final time.